My name is Paul Young. If you like to just call me Small Paul. <laughs> My son is with me. He's setting up the book table, I think, somewhere. His name is Timothy. We call him Tiny Tim. He's bigger than me, really. And uh, my wife, Vicki, is here. Uh, I went a long time as a single an evangelist. I was so picky, I waited for Vicki. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy that I waited for her. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to be drawing. Uh, we speak in hundreds of schools and churches and prisons and on television and other places. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to be drawing, and two things. Number one, there'll be something here for everyone. Also, you'll get a little sample of what I do in hundreds of schools. We've been in several hundred schools in Cape Town where we live. Uh, he, <clears throat> the pastor said something about my growing up. I guess you could say I grew up. <clears throat> I uh, grew up in America, preached for a good many years there, and now we've been living in Cape Town for the last 21 years. Um, and so we, the Lord led me to plan a trip to this area a month or two ago, and so I called the pastor and some others. We preached a lot in the schools, but I didn't have any appointments to go to the schools. I used to have a, a, a young lady, an Afrikaans lady, who was very helpful and quite talented in scheduling us in schools, and quite a few here in Pretoria. I'm guessing 20 or 30 schools. Um, but it's been several years, and they've forgotten some of them. And, and also, this is not a very good time of the year to be scheduling schools because they're writing exams. So I went, we went, uh, Vicky and I, and our son Timothy, went to 12 schools about a week and a half ago that most of them I'd been to before. Not one of them scheduled me. The next day we went to another part of uh, town, it was down in Johannesburg, and uh, we met maybe eight schools and scheduled two. And then we went to a township and uh, went to six schools and scheduled all six of them. And then we went to some others in a couple townships and we've had a wonderful opportunity preaching to thousands and thousands of people who need to hear the gospel. I'll tell you what I do when I go to the schools. I tell them who I, who I am, small Paul. And I tell them that I, ha I give a talk that helps the children behave better. Now, as you know, the South African government is not really very enthusiastic about evangelists going to schools. You know that. But the fact is... There are hundreds of principals in these schools who are so fed up with bad behavior and kids raping other kids and stealing and, and, and rebellious against their teachers and just chaos that a lot of the principals are quite happy for me to come in and give a message of repentance and turning from sin so they don't go to hell and have a free gift of eternal life. That's what I'll be talking about tonight. And so now in the next couple weeks we have, including a few from last week, uh, about 25 schools were scheduled to be in. And so if you'd pray for us, we'd appreciate it. Now, before I draw any, let me just show you a picture I drew already. First, I want you to notice there's two roads. Jesus said, be sure to enter in at the narrow gate. Here's a little narrow gate. Here's a wide gate, a little narrow path, a wide road. Jesus said, just a few people go that way. He said, many people go this way. But it's a narrow path, he said, that leads to life. Eternal life in heaven. The Bible speaks a good bit about heaven. A beautiful golden city with walls and foundations of precious stones. Can't show you how beautiful. Can't show you how big. 2,000 kilometers long. 2,000 kilometers wide. 2,000 kilometers high. I just drew a little edge of the city. I'm looking forward to going to heaven, especially now. Vicki and I have a little girl. She died suddenly of the virus. We sure cried, still do sometimes. 
Our arms are empty. We're looking forward to seeing her again. She's not crying in heaven. Fullness of joy, pleasure forever. She used to like to climb up on things. I wonder if she's climbing up in the tree of life right now, picking all the fruit she wants. She's not going to fall out of the tree and get hurt. Not in heaven. She liked animals too, especially horses. And when you children go to school tomorrow, some of you go to work tomorrow, I want my little girl up in heaven to be out horseback riding. <laughs> the Bible talks about white horses in heaven. You can read it, Revelation 19. I'm looking forward to holding her again, playing with her again, horseback riding with her. We're going to have a fun time in heaven. But Jesus said there's just a few on that narrow path. Just a few. He said there are many on the wide road. God has told us to go his way. Obey him. What have we done? All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. We've gone our own stupid way. We've gotten ourselves in trouble and more trouble and too, too dumb to figure out as our own sins bring so much trouble on ourselves. God says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord for he'll have mercy. When I was a boy, I would steal things. Mommy said, did you take that? I lied to her. She knew I was lying. She loved me, so she... She gave me a hiding. Of course, hers was kind of mild compared to Dad's. He had a board about that long, about that wide, about that thick. Somebody wrote on it, Board of Education. <laughs> I'm telling you, he educated me with it. I'm not making fun of my dad. I'm not criticizing him. The Bible says, you shall beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Oh, I love my children too much. No, you don't. He that spares the rod hates his son, but he that loves him whips him early, diligently. But mom did something else as well. I had lied. She, sh she made me copy some Bible verses. Maybe 15 or 20 of them. All about the sin of lying. Had to write them out. I still remember one of them especially. Revelation 21.8. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'm glad mom loved me enough to tell me the truth and give me fair warning from the word of God. I needed to make a big change. All liars must go to the lake of fire. We do need to make a big change because we've lied. Am I right? Now, don't sit there and lie to me now. I said we have told lies. Am I right? <laughs> we have. Sometimes we've stolen. Kids, did you ever get some food mommy did not say you could have? Men, boys, we've sinned when we have hurt others. God said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you love your neighbor like you love yourself, are you going to try to hurt him? Well, no. Ladies, girls, we've sinned when we've hurt others by the things we said about them. <laughs> girls, ladies, am I right? God said, love your neighbor as yourself. Do to others as you'd have them do to you. Man, we've really broken that one. Sometimes we could have shared with those who did not have so much. Sometimes we did not even think about it. Oh, we thought about what we wanted. Didn't think much about what they wanted. Am I right? But God said, love your neighbor as yourself. Man, we've broken that one a lot. And that's not a little minor rule that doesn't matter much. That's a great commandment. All the law is summed up in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5 and Romans 13. Man, we need to make a big change. We've gone our own way. 
God said, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, for he'll have mercy. We've disobeyed those that God has placed over us. Children, obey your parents in all things. Colossians 3.20. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord in everything. Ephesians 5.22 and 24. Obey the laws. Which ones? 1 Peter 2.13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. And the leaders in the church, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. And we've heard what our authorities have told us, and many times we've disobeyed, especially when they're not watching. Am I right? I have not even named some of the sins we've done in secret. I'll mention two. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, men, boys, you know that happens a lot. Looking at the girls, the women, the pictures, the porn with sexual desire. How serious is it? It is so serious, Jesus said, if your eye offends you, your eye makes you keep on sinning by what you're looking at. It'd be better to pull it out, throw it away. Enter into life with only one eye rather than keep both eyes and be cast into hell. Jesus said in Matthew 5. Man, you can see we need to make a big change. A big change. The Bible word is repent. It's a change of mind. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, for he'll have mercy. You see, going the Lord's way means forsaking our own way, doing the wrong things. We used to tell lies, now we tell the... Folks, that wasn't really a very hard question. If we've been telling lies and we repent, now we will tell the truth. That stuff we stole, now when we can, we give it back. Somebody said, no, you just confess to the Lord. You don't just confess to the Lord. The Bible says you restore what was stolen. Suppose that the treasurer leaves a, the, the uh, offering basket or whatever you use here on the, on the uh, steps and the whole church leaves and he forgets and leaves it there and somebody comes in reaches his hand in. It's just full of 200 rand notes. You know, like it always is, right? And uh, he pulls it out, sticks it in his pocket and says, uh, Lord, please forgive me for stealing this. Will God listen to that nonsense? No, he won't. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord's hand is not too short to save. His ear is not too hard of hearing to hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Man, we need to make a big change. It's not just the things we do, it's even the things we think. It's not just, it is wrong to steal, it's also wrong to be dissatisfied and want what others have. It's not just wrong to commit adultery physically, it's wrong to look and lust. Here's another one, another secret sin. Jesus said, whoever is angry with his brother is in danger of the judgment. And whoever says, you fool, is in danger of hell fire. Now, most of them never have shot anybody. Ma'am, have you ever shot anybody? You have. I better ask somebody else. Sir, have you ever shot anybody? <laughs> have you ever killed anybody? No, you're good. Good for you. Okay. Uh, did you ever... Ma'am, did you ever stab anyone? Yeah, both of them. Two ladies uh, said no on that one. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we haven't stabbed anybody or shot anybody, most of us at least. But you know, and I know, we've gotten angry with others. Sometimes called them bad names. And Jesus said, whoever does that is in danger of hell fire. 
Man, the law of Moses was really strict. It's kind of mild compared to the commands of Jesus and his teaching. Man, you can see we need to make a big change in what we do, in the way we talk, and even the way we think. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, for he'll have mercy. Boy, we need to make a big change. We've told lies, but all liars go to the lake of fire. Now, when we repent, we tell the... Pretty good. Four of you knew the answer. <laughs> that stuff we stole, now when we can, we give it back. I'll give you an example of that. An example of somebody who made this change. You see, John the Baptist and Jesus preached repentance and do works fit for repentance. If I've really repented about my lying, I will tell the... Right. Uh, let me tell a story about a man and draw his picture. Before I draw his picture, here's a picture of small Paul. And here's my size 16 shoes. That's me. Now, here's a guy I'm telling a story about. Not a boy, he's a man, but a very short man. You heard about Zacchaeus. His job was collecting taxes, but he, like a lot of government uh, <coughs> workers, was crooked, corrupt. He's got his money bag. Yes, sir, can I help you? Yes, I'm Zacchaeus. I've come to collect your taxes. How much is it? 10,000 rand. <laughs> He's lying to her. It's not that much. If you don't pay, we'll take your house away. A liar, a thief. He's on that wide road, getting closer to the fire every day. Probably not thinking much about it. That's the way most people do. They're just thinking about the pleasures of sin at the well, Jesus healed him and now can you tell me is that guy happy or what he's pretty happy and uh, everybody wanted to see him they want to see Jesus little Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus as well but he's got a problem he's so short he can't see over everybody's heads he can't push through the crowd so he, he's determined he wants to get to Jesus. So he goes running ahead of the crowd. You can see he's in a hurry. He sees a tree up ahead. If he gets up in the tree, he'll be high enough to see Jesus. So here he is, up in the tree waiting to see Jesus. Jesus saw him. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, you must come down. I'm coming to your house today. Jesus wants to come to my house. Man, Zacchaeus is so excited. He's so happy. Man, he came down quickly. Here he comes. I said he obeyed quickly. Kids, my dad used to tell us, delayed obedience is disobedience. He obeyed Jesus quickly. He received Jesus joyfully. He did what? He received Jesus. The Bible says, who, if it... Um, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. This guy, this little crooked guy, this little government uh, <coughs> crooked politician, whatever you call him, he suddenly become one of God's children. Now he gets, he brings Jesus to his house. Let's fix a chair at the table for Jesus. And Zacchaeus is so rich, he probably has lots of servants. And here's a cook bringing in some food. We'll give him a chef's cap. And Zacchaeus is so short, I'm going to give him a high chair. <laughs> so Zacchaeus says, Lord, I'm going to give half of my stuff to the poor people. Did you hear? That's a huge change. Before, he would lie to get it. He would steal. He's so greedy, he wants it all for himself. Nobody's making him do this. He's given half his stuff to the poor? I think you'll agree that is a big change. Now he's starting to love his neighbor as himself. That's how you can tell if you're saved. There's one book of the Bible that's written to, to help us know if we're really saved. We may know we have eternal life. Which one is it? The book is 1 John. And here's what it says in 1 John 3.14. We know that we have passed from death 
unto life because, how would you finish that statement? How do you know if you've passed from death to life? Well, here's the Bible answer. We know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whoever, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life. You see, when, you really, when we really repent, we make a change. Oh, we're not perfect yet, and we stumble and mess up, but we still make a change, and there's a difference. Here's another way it says it in 1 John. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. Now, does that mean that when you get saved, you get your act together in every area so that you're as good as Jesus? <laughs> I wish. No, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. It says right there a couple of verses prior to that. But there is enough of a change so that the Holy Spirit words it this way. God's word says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his. If nobody gets it right, I'm going to start this sermon all over again. <laughs> How do you know if you know the Lord? And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You're right. He who says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar. You're right. So, he's being kind. Something else he does. He says, if I've stolen, if I've defrauded anybody, I'll pay back four times as much. He goes back to those same houses where he stole. Now, Zacchaeus, I have already paid my taxes. What are you doing here? I took too much last time. Well, I thought you did. <laughs> I'll pay back. He reaches in and gives back what he stole. All of it. Now he reaches in, reach in again, pays her double. Reaches in a third time. I bet her eyes are getting big and she's thinking, man, he didn't get this much. This is great. <laughs> he pays four times as much as he stole. Kids, if he stole 100 rand, he paid back 400 rand. Well, that's a big change. Yeah, when you come to Jesus, you start making a big change. There is repentance. And if there's real repentance, there'll be fruits of repentance. There'll be evidence that it's real. We used to tell lies. Now we tell the truth. That stuff we stole, now when we can, we give it back. We've hurt others. Now we will be kind. We used to be too selfish to share. Now we will be happy to, to give, to share. We used to disobey. Now we will. These aren't really all that hard questions, folks. We, we used to disobey. Now we will obey, even when the authorities are not watching. We've committed a lot of sins in secret, and we're still tempted. But now, even in the privacy of our thoughts, we want to please God. That's what repentance is, a change of mind. But definitely, we definitely don't want to go there. So that's why John the Baptist said, flee from the wrath to come. Just like little Zacchaeus is running, hurrying to, fight, to, to, to get to Jesus. Man, we better be, be sure we turn from sin and do it in a hurry. But God doesn't want us there either. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus came. He did many miracles, very kind, very nice. They murdered him. Buried him in a, gr in a grave. Dead three days. But on the third day, he <laughs> rose again, proved he's God's son. When the Bible calls him God's son, it explains in John 5, 18, it means he's equal with God. He's just as much God as God the Father is God. When Jesus called God his own father, he made himself, called himself equal to God. Now, why, was he, why did he let them murder him on the cross? Whew, he was taking our punishment so we would not have to take our own punishment 
in everlasting fire. Could we have most of the lights off, if you don't mind? Could, could somebody turn good? Thanks. Wow, I like Jesus. He has rescued me from everlasting fire. Yeah, I like Jesus. Saved me from going to hell, and he's put me on my way to heaven. I'm looking forward to seeing my little girl again up in heaven, same mom, dad, my sister, and some others. We're going to have a wonderful time there. Kids, you have more fun there than you ever had here. And it's a free gift. Did you hear? A free gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But you must ask, and we need to check. The Bible says examine yourselves whether you're in the faith. We were all going our own way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. Has there come a time when you change your mind so that you really want to do what the Lord says, whether people are watching you or not? Even in the privacy of your thoughts. Check yourself. If you realize that you're still going your own way, I remember when I was a boy. I did a lot of bad things. I was very good at obeying my dad, <laughs> if he was around. I wasn't a complete idiot, but around my friends, I did a lot of wicked things, and some of them got me in trouble. One of them in particular taught me some bad things. But you know what my main problem was? You know who my main problem was? My own wicked heart. I asked God to cleanse my sinful heart. Is that what you need? I believe there are many of you who've turned from your way, you've turned to Jesus, but, if you, but you've been drifting away. And then some of you, I wonder how many of you realize you never have even turned from your way. Your conscience is telling you that you're guilty, that you used to tell lies, now you tell them even more when you need to. You used to steal things, now you've gotten pretty good at it. Used to hurt others, too selfish to share. Now, only one you love pretty much is just yourself. Used to disobey. Now you're bigger, nobody's going to tell you what to do. Is that you? If it is, ask Jesus to wash your sinful heart. Give you this free gift. We don't deserve it. I certainly didn't deserve it. But he gave it to me. He promised Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If that's you, you know you need to make this change. If you're going to start making this change, turn to Jesus for mercy to receive a free gift that you didn't deserve. Then pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, please wash my sinful heart. Make me clean on the inside so I can go up to heaven like you promised and then tell him thank you now I'm going to say that prayer one more time if you didn't understand before if your own conscience shows you that you have not even turned from your way but you're going to turn to Jesus for mercy and go his way now then pray this prayer with all your heart. Lord Jesus, please wash my sinful heart. Make me clean so that I can go up to heaven like you promised. And then tell him, thank you. Amen. Now, we have the lights on again, please. Now, if you've asked Jesus to save you, if you believe him, Will he, will he get you to heaven, yes or no? Yes, he will. He promised. He wouldn't break his promise. And if you do believe him, you'll start making a big change. We used to tell lies. Now we tell the... We've hurt others. Now we will be kind. We have disobeyed. Now we will... Are those the changes you're going to be making? Are those the changes you can see in your life as you look back over your life since you made a profession of faith? The Bible says examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Now, if we're going to love others, 
we're not going to want them in hell. We have neighbors. We have relatives. We have friends. We have people who work for us. We can help them make this change. We can help many make this change and receive the free gift of eternal life like we received. It was rather simple. It's not hard to understand. And Jesus made it simple enough so that a child, in fact, even adults cannot be saved unless they come like a child. He hasn't made it complicated. He hasn't made it all that hard. Now, I have something that'll help you share the gospel with others. I have in my pocket a little paper here. Some of you up front can maybe see the same picture as I have right here. Uh, our family, Vicki and Tim and some of the others as well, have given out, I'm pretty sure, more than 100,000. Um, well, I know more than 100,000. Uh, many, many personally, and then thousands more in the schools. Uh, it makes it a pretty, a lot easier to share with, a, share with others the gospel when you can just show them this wide road, and the fire, and the heavenly city. And if you forget some of the things that I preached on tonight, you can just open it up and has the, has the Bible verses. And I uh, have them in English, also have them in Afrikaans. By the way, I hope you appreciate the fact that though I can't talk Afrikaans so good, I hope you appreciated the fact that I did draw all my pictures in Afrikaans. <laughs> so if you'd like to have one for yourself, or if you'd like to have several Afrikaans or English or both, they're on the book table. Where's the book table? Somewhere out there. Okay, good. Uh, so you can have some of the books. I'm going to ask you to have only one per family. But that doesn't apply to these. If you want several, uh, a little girl in another church this morning asked me if she could have some for her class tomorrow. And that's fine. Just don't waste them. But if you want to give them out to your class, that's good. Uh, just a couple days ago, a few days ago, this happened several times recently. I've been talking to some kids on the street. They're, they're kicking a soccer ball around. And, uh, and they listened. They gathered around, and I showed them. I gave them the papers themselves. And then th th they wanted some more to give their friends. Some would ask for two or three. Some would ask for five or six or seven. Some even more. And I saw them passing them out to others. I wasn't making them. I was busy talking to these kids. And people would walk down the street. And the kids would, that's pretty nice. Young kids, seven, seventh, eighth grade, doing more than a lot of Christians who've been saved for 20, 30, 40 years. Telling others and passing out the good news. So if you like some, you're welcome to take them. Now there's some other books as well. Let me just mention them briefly. There's, there's uh, several back there, but here's one called A Happy Home. It has a picture of my wife Vicki and me and our four children. Now, Tim, Tiny Tim, is back. he was little back then. And then here's our little daughter, Cherish. She's the one we're waiting to see in heaven. Our other two children, our other two children right here, they're all grown now. In fact, on the back of the book, it has a picture of our family about 15 years later. All grown. Some of them have children of their own now. And they all have done the same thing, drawing pictures and telling the good news in schools and places like that. Now, lots of homes not so happy. I don't need to explain that to you. Tension, hatred, anger, fighting, split, up, split apart. It doesn't have to be that way. God's word, I've gathered passages in the Bible that tell you how you can have a happy home. How you can have God's blessing if you'll go his way. You can't just go your own way and expect to have God's blessing. It'll mean some changes to obey and go God's way. And so there's a chapter in here about... Uh, about marriage, another one about what the Bible says about being single, uh, about, the, about the wife's duties, about the husband's duties, to love his wife like himself. That's a pretty big order. Uh, the duty of children, uh, what the Bible says about divorce, what the Bible says about remarriage. This is, there's not really much opinion in here. Taking God's word, you can look at it and see for yourself what it is. Then there's another little book, I don't have it right with me, but it's called How to Have a Time Alone with God. Now that's so important. 
If you think you can get along fine as a Christian without having a time alone with God each day, meditating on his word, and praying and getting the help you need for yourself and others you love. If you think you can get along fine without that, that's about as bright as trying to take a trip with no petrol in your car. You're not going to get very far. But it, as you enjoy God's word and do what it says, it opens up a thousand. And uh, so that book is back there. There's another one, a bigger one, Principles of Church Growth. If, a, if, if just this half the church practiced them, you could win enough people to the Lord to fill up several halls this size. Now, there's also, let me show you one more thing I think I have here. Yes. There's a DVD back on the table that has not just one chalk talk like I did this evening. There are more than 30 on here. If you like one, you're welcome while they last. But even if you don't get one, that's fine because on the back of this little paper, this little track, which says, which way are you going? On the back of it, it has our YouTube channel. And it has, a, oh, probably 30 or 40 at least, chalk talks, different pictures, different lessons that you, kids, would you like to show your friends small Paul drawn pictures? You can do that. You can get your friends. Uh, you have some neighbors need to be saved? Some of you do. Some of you have some friends that need to be saved. How many of you have in-laws that need to be saved real bad? Can I see your hand? No, you better not put your hand up. Anyway, you can go to our YouTube channel, and you can watch, the, even if you don't have this. And also, our website is on the back here as well, and you can read all the books. I have several, uh, several other books that I have, didn't, didn't have available now, but you can read them free on our website. Our website is drawingotherstochrist.com. But you can see that on there. Uh, one of them is a little booklet. All, all the books are rather short, brief, and easy to understand. One of them is how to get your prayers answered. Just a, lots of examples how God has answered prayer in our family. I think it will be an encouragement to you. Now, I need some help. You can help me and Vicki and Tiny Tim if you'll pray for us. Tomorrow we have, I think, three schools large schools. Uh, I've never been to them before except to go schedule them. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably more than 2,000, maybe three or 4,000. And then all this week, next week as well. Uh, if you'll pray for us, it'll help us. Now, some of the Afrikan schools we go to are very well disciplined, and I really enjoy preaching to them. These are not Afrikan schools. Some of the schools I go to are uh, chaos. Some are very, very, very well disciplined, very well behaved and respectful. Some of them are not. I'll go along, along these line of classrooms, and I hear them all. It's chaos in there. And sometimes the teacher's not even there. And sometimes it's chaos, and the teacher is there. I'm not sure which is worse. And so when you go and preach, sometimes it's a real, real challenge. But if you'll pray for us, it'll help us. Will you pray for us sometimes? I said, would you please pray for us sometimes? Yes. Good. I'll pray for you as well. Thanks, Pastor, for letting us come. God bless you.